bag of dicks, lady. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm working on it. comedy bullet train directed by david leach known for directing deadpool 2 he also co-directed the first john wick film as well as atomic blonde starring charlie's baron and of course the spin-off masterpiece from the fast and the furious franchise Hobbs and shaw can't wait for the sequel the film stars brad pitt as ladybug a seasoned and but unlucky american assassin who hopes his latest job will go peacefully this time after one too many gigs have gone off the rails. He's trying to pull away from this life, but his handler pulls him back in to collect the briefcase, which of course won't be the case as this mission puts him on a collision course with lethal adversaries from around the globe, all with connected yet conflicting objectives on the world's fastest train heading from Tokyo to Kyoto in a non-stop The movie features a large eclectic ensemble cast, including the likes of Aaron Taylor Johnson as Tangerine Lemon's brother, Best known for playing Kick-Ass in the Kick-Ass films, he appeared as Quicksilver, Petro Maximoff in Avengers Age of Ultron, uh, Wanda Maximoff's uh, The Scarlet Witch's twin brother, and he also starred in Garth Edwards' uh, 2014 Godzilla. Interesting thing to know, he's really reunited with Elizabeth Olsen, but this time their husband and wife. And let's not forget, he's married in real life to Samantha Louise, a filmmaker who is 23 years his senior. This boy like himself some older ladies. Brian Tyree Henry as Lemon, a British assassin and Tangerine's twin brother. <laughs> he appeared in the masterpiece of a Marvel film, The Eternals, which you still have not watched. He actually also appeared in King Kong vs. Godzilla. So that's where him and uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson kind of have kind of a connection there and the Marvel connection. All right, we're going to go into our Japanese cast. Oh my God! Here, Andrew Koji as the father, a Japanese assassin. And then there's uh, Hiroyuki Sanada as the elder, a former Japanese assassin, and uh, Kimaru's, fa well, the father's father. And we get Michael Shannon as White Death, the leader of the largest criminal <laughs> assassin organization, General Zod himself. And then we have kind of Benito A. Martinez Ocasio as the wolf, a Mexican assassin. Zazie Beats makes an appearance as Hornet, an American assassin who specializes in poisons. Karen Funaki has a kind of a small little part here as a train concussion girl. Do you know who Karen Funaki is? And of course, we have the one and only Sandra Bullock playing the handler. Yes. Jack is in the house. That was great. You were having a great time. I'm here now. Uh, yeah, this is not a solo <laughs> podcast. We uh, Turk is here. I was getting worried I wasn't going to be able to get in there. <laughs> well, you know. No, you you did good. That was a great introduction to all the characters. That was awesome. <laughs> okay, so from seeing the trailer, this movie looked like to me John Wick, Kill Bill, Guy Ritchie film, all in one, taking place on a train. Yeah, I agree. Actually. Yeah, I, I really I really did like this movie. It had a lot of everything in it, and uh, it was just nice and fresh and new, and it was uh, just a, a breath of fresh air to go see. Seeing Brad Pitt playing eccentric assassins sounded intriguing to me, and it looked like a lot of fun from the trailers. Since I didn't really know anything about this film, I didn't have any expectations going in. The premise of this film is pretty basic. The cast is solid, the characters are excellent, including the mini side characters. I would say Brad Pitt gives a terrific lead performance. He has never been afraid of completely making fun of himself while still being a capable action star. The standouts of the film for me was Aaron Taylor Johnson and Tyree Henry. They had great chemistry together and great humor. You could tell on the screen they really enjoyed working together. 
you know, watching these two guys reminded me of another another film with two great characters, and that is of uh, Vincent Vega and Jules Winfield's relationship in Pulp Fiction. Did you not see that a little bit? I, I guess you could say like their their back and forth banter uh, was reminiscent of that movie and some other movies. Kind of like I felt their banter was more so Guy Ritchie's uh, the characters between uh, Turk and um, Tommy Boy and Snatch. Have you seen that film? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Don't hate me. <laughs> Overall, I think I the humor had some misses, but generally is a pretty funny movie throughout, I thought. I thought they did a pretty good job paying off everything that is set up along the way, especially if you stay through the credits as it does tie up a few loose ends. I thought David Leach's direction is amazing. The film definitely oozes style with gorgeous lighting vibrant colors and inventive camera work you could tell leach's many years work working on action films as a stunt performer and stunt coordinator really pays off in this movie i agree um <clears throat> i sorry i enjoyed it as well i i really like the humor i found myself laughing quite a bit and i had a good time watching this movie i also liked the the color scheme of the film it was like a japanese noir little type with the you know you got the flavors of japan like the cute kittens and stuff and the you know the big blow-up dolls and stuff like that it was really cool i, I enjoyed it I, it kind of goes off the rails with the overblown cgi in the finale but overall however sure. i think thanks to the endless visual style some surprising twists and plenty of gleeful violent and energetic choreographed action set pieces it works for the most part i think a lot of people will have a blast watching this movie from beginning to end Overall, I didn't mind Bullet Train, but I thought there was a lot missteps impeding it from being an awesome action flick like John Wick or Kill Bill. Uh, at first, the movie wasn't really hitting it for me. I was a little suspect that it was a cheap parody of like a Guy Ritchie movie. You know, quick cuts with quirky action. When a character came on screen, it was introduced, like they would introduce, their name gets slammed right on the screen. And we've seen that before, so I, I kind of... It took me a little bit to kind of get into that, but once it did, I'm like, okay, this is what they're doing. Cool. And I, I appreciated it. Well, I'm, I'm totally okay with all that stuff because I know that this story originates from a manga, a Japanese comic, uh, just so you know. So um, you probably knew that already, but, you know, it, it did have that little bit of manga feel to it. Yeah. I don't read manga, but from what I've seen and heard, um, this does feel a little bit like that. So I actually appreciated that. I thought the first act was a little bit, but once I got past that, eventually the film actually did win me over. And I think really was the performances that did that mostly for me. Yeah, the acting was great. Yeah, okay. the, and like we said, the, I think everyone, um, and what I kind of appreciate a little bit more in this movie, I like that we have some big name actors coming in and out of the film. They don't necessarily have a big part, you know, they, they come in, There's they have their little moment with some of the characters and either they die or they we don't see them again. I enjoy that. And actually, there's a lot of well-known people in here, like I said, Karen Funaki, mm -hmm. who appeared she was katana in the first suicide squad movie and she's also plays uh the woman in uh, the boys uh the kind of um a character has superpowers and her, seeing her kind of evolve in that show has been great and she's she's lovely to look at that's important <laughs> yeah one of the downsides for me was the runtime it is over two hours it kind of lags throughout and even towards the end of the film it could have been shortened a bit but otherwise moved along at a steady rate i would say i think the rewatchability of this film for me is pretty good i would actually mm -hmm. like to see this movie again and, and t try and take more in from it there's a lot to kind of unpack from this show I know, though, uh, the Hiroyuki Sonata and uh, Andrew Koji's characters in the storylines was written to be the heart of the film and balance out all the humor and irreverence. But I found it took away from the fun of the f that was going on in it because I really like the zany stuff. I kind of wished it was just more so just unapologetically balls to the wall crazy stuff. And I felt like the serious stuff kind of slowed the movie down. And also, as much as I like him as an actor, I thought Michael Shannon was miscast as White Death, the leader of the criminal organization. However, I think a lot of people will have a blast watching this movie, like I said, from beginning to end. And it's not a movie you need to rush out and go see, but if you 
feel like going out and checking out a movie, the movie you could have a lot of fun with. I enjoyed Michael Shannon. I, you're probably right, though. They probably could have casted somebody else in the role. Might have might have paid off a little bit better. But uh, a serviceable villain. He he plays villains quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe that's why they they sought after him for this. But uh, all, overall, I enjoyed the film. I liked how they tied everything in. You know, at the end, and you know, everything kind of worked out and kind of made you laugh. And yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, some of the humor, like a lot of the humor. Hit, but then, like I said, a lot of it didn't hit for me. I think the humor between Tangerine and Lemon was what really worked, and I think Brad Pitt's humor was was really good, though he's a little bit aloof to everything. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he was so nonchalant mm -hmm. and just a really relaxed character who just wanted to get mm -hmm. off the train and... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, th I thought it was kind of quirky. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we kind of gave a little bit of our general kind of impressions movie. We're going to move into kind of a little bit more spoiler things. So if you haven't seen the movie, uh, go see your movie or turn up, uh, turn it off from this point because I'm going to dive into some stuff that's... And then come back and listen to us. And come back and listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> Warning! As I said about Michael Shannon being horribly miscast, one of my problems was the Russian accent. I felt like it was horrible. And also you could see that he could not maintain it in some of the scenes, especially when he was yelling. You could tell it was an American Michael Shannon's voice. I will find him! Yeah, now, so this is probably deep in like deep story wise from the manga. So they made him Russian. Obviously, it's a Russian character right the white death so maybe get an actor who can really portray that russian accent like a russian actor or whoever why not like dolph lundgren exactly like i mean i know yep. i character of ivan drago is ukrainian but he could pull they're very russian. one of the same yeah very the, one the, of the accents same. are very close yeah. very close you could have got him or any other one i must break you uh, and because you could, and also the wig, it felt like a weird wig to me. Like it could tell, it wasn't good. Your hairpiece looks like something that was killed crossing the highway. I don't know whether to comb it or scrape it off with a shovel and bury it in the line. <laughs> and part of my problem with the the white death character is because there's all this fun stuff happening between all the other characters that you have the with the elder and the father. He's being thrown in when he's introduced because he's introduced into the movie by the second to third act is when we really get to see the White Death. And they set him up to be this all-powerful, nonstop Russian guy. that He can take out people himself. Like, he basically took over the Yakuza uh, criminal organization. And then when he kind of comes on screen, he's kind of like an idiot, Kind of, yeah. And he's only run by, really, his agenda is to bring all these assassins together so you can get revenge on them. Yeah. That's his motive. Everyone has, like, a motive. Even the the wolf assassin is because of his wife. Everyone dies from uh, the hornet. Do you remember, what is uh, the hornet's agenda in all this? I can't remember why she was poisoning people. Was she? She was. She was contracted. What by the elder? Right. She was. Right? The, she was the cook at that wedding, and she poisoned everybody. Yeah. At that wedding, for her to get onto the train, I'm not sure what led her there. I can't remember. Well, she was coming there for that briefcase, like money. The money. She's okay. Being, yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. her agenda, but I couldn't remember. Like again, only saw this movie once, but I'm like, what is? I like the fight and all the stuff with her and the Brad Pitt ladybug. But their interaction was like kind of like a chance occurrence. It wasn't like she was going there to get him. Yeah. It, it was, was more like chance. they bumped in. It was by chance. And they're both at this wedding. So I thought, well, maybe she recognized him. And she's like, he's a loose end or something mm -hmm. outside of that. But I guess she's there for the money. So it kind of makes sense. But it was like, this is how they have a face off. It's a chance yeah, event because yeah. that character, he's kind of an idiot. <laughs> he kind of is, yeah. Like he, you know, I, I guess they were trying to focus on him being bad luck because, like, when uh, Tangerine was going to kill Prince, the the little girl who turns out to be the daughter of White Death. The, yeah, like I thought Joey King as uh, Prince, the British assassin girl, posing as a schoolgirl was really good in it. You just wanted her, like, you just want her in the movie to get her coming up in. 
because she's just manipulating everyone using the fact that she looks like this little innocent girl. Like the only person I don't think really saw uh, got manipulated, but it was Lemon. But he because he's really good at reading people. He's really good at reading people because he he uh, reads Thomas the Choo Choo Train. <laughs> Thomas the Tank, yeah. Thomas, <laughs> Thomas the yeah, and he uses stickers and he he's he'll stickers. put the sticker on their forehead to like what type of character they what are. What type they are, <laughs> and if, the, if it's Diesel, Grumpy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That was cute. That, that, that was that was yeah. pretty good. Uh, yeah. So you wanted her to, uh, you wanted her to really die. Yeah. And she does have her a nice come ups at the end. Yes. Though to her character, I thought it was really lame that she reveals herself to be the daughter of the White Death when he shows up on the train. And her agenda is she wants to kill him because he never like showed her enough love as a kid. Well. You know, each to their own. <laughs> like, she has the gun ring to explode in his face. He doesn't bite and tells her that she was never been a part of his plan. And then she kind of, and the thing is, she kind of disappears for, like, the movie unexplainably until the end, until she runs well, out. Well, it was because of the accident she disappears. We don't know what happened to her during the accident. She survived it, obviously, right? Well, everybody survived Every, the accident. Everybody survived the accident, but that's what I'm saying is that's why they cut away from her. And then she shows up at the end. I know, but she played a big part in it. And they just, like, the movie, like, it felt like they yeah. were like, well, we'll tie it up at the end. It's just like, this is a person who has played, like, a huge part from all of, like, the beginning. And then all of a sudden, because we got to get these actions, she just kind of disappears. And, like, everybody survives this train crash. Yes, the fastest do. train in the world. Yeah. And everyone <laughs> survives. And it was pretty funny how, like, the Brad Pitt character... You know the the stuffed animal. Was it the, the blow the mascot, up? The blow it up? was the blow up kitty that yeah. saved him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the blow up kitty that saved him, and that was a pretty cool uh, yeah. piece. But the thing is, it, it kind of makes sense that like Brad Pitt and David Leach have has they have a long time kind of relationship because David Leach was also his like stunt double. So all the way back from two thousand and five, like Mister and Mrs. Smith, they they've worked together. And then remember, Brad Pitt had a cameo in. Death Deadpool too, mm. so you can really see that in a way David Leach is kind of turning into like a, a filmmaker like Quentin Tarantino, where a lot of the same actors are showing up. Are showing up because yeah. you got Zazie Beats, you got Brad Pitt, you, you even have uh, Ryan Reynolds who ends up being <laughs> cameo the the, ca the Carver, the, the the reason why Brad Pitt is there and. Uh, that okay so because yeah, he called in sick he called in sick <laughs> which this is why like white death wants all these assassins on the train because they wronged him right because he thinks brad pitt's ladybug is the the ryan reynolds carver and carvel's the one who drove into the wife's killing her but he's mixed up because he was filling in for him right because he called in sick yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the twins because they fucked up a Bolivia job and killed his whole crew. Yeah. So he wants to get them. And then then there's a Hornet who really who's really good with poison and she ended up poisoning the doctor who was supposed to take care of his wife before she That's the right. That's, that's the connection. That's yeah. the connection. I forgot about that. That's right. Yeah. He was the only doctor that could actually save her on that surgery and she poisoned that one doctor. <laughs> the one doctor. Yeah. But the thing is how did, Oh yeah. So was it the that's where I'm confused why she was there. So it was the White Death that brought her to the train. Brought her there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah, I, I forgot Good about memories. That. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now, okay, yeah, that's right, because that's how she's there. The the revenge part with the elder, because his daughter, it's weird how everything's connected, because the daughter pushed uh, his the elder son's son off. Yeah. And then she uses uh, the son as kind of to lure the father. She blackmails him that she will kill his son if he doesn't go. She she doesn't go do this job for yes. him. Yeah. But of course, the elder steps ahead of her. Yeah. And his agenda is because the White Death was the right hand man that killed his master and his whole crew. So he's out for revenge. It's like everyone's out for revenge. The only person that's not out there for anything is really. Brad Pitt's character. Yeah, he was just there to grab the briefcase and get the hell off the, yeah, train. Get off the train. He didn't. He doesn't even want to be an assassin. No, anymore, no. So. he was. Uh, what does he normally do? Snatch and grabs. Yeah, snatch he just snatch and grabs. So he's not even an assassin. Yeah, and he's not really. He's just a snatch and grab guy. Eh? Yeah. So he's brought into this, and there was like there, there was some really good editing, but I thought the one part where when him and the wolf first have their meeting, they, it, it focused so much on tangerine and lamb and. That by the time they cut back to Brad Pitt's character, their fight still hasn't started. So there's like, well, you kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of, kind of took me out. Or like, well, you may as well have 
I just thought that was weird editing choice. We, we did get to see some different points of view. You know how in some movies they'll yeah. they'll play a portion of the movie in his eyes, and then they'll play a portion in the movie in someone else's eyes. I found that that was in there a little bit. I didn't feel that though. I did Maybe a couple I times. That. A couple times in the scenes, I found the like, oh, this is their point of view leading up to that moment. I did like that. Well, you did, but th- that but at that point it wasn't. It was just the editing where. We went back to other characters and what they were doing before these two characters were squaring off. I get there mm. that like before they did, they would show like a flashback that led to them there. That yeah. was good. I thought yeah. that worked well in the film, but I just thought in that scene when the wolf and ladybug kind of he first steps on the train, it cuts and for like quite a few minutes, we're we're sitting in a slow scene with Tangerine and Lemon talking about Thomas the well, Train. Yeah, I I can see that. I I was okay I kind of bugged it me. because I I kind of get the sense that the way they told the story, there were there were, there were moments in time where you could kind of freeze time with some other characters and play through another scene and then go back to that scene and and kind of restart it or whatever. I was okay with that. That didn't really bother me. I didn't really get hung up on that. Okay, it just reminded me like yeah. it felt like the Phantom Menace. The grand finale, you have like four perspectives. The lightsaber between Darth Maul and Obi Wan and Qui Gon starts, and then we cut to go see what Jar Jar's doing. It takes the momentum away. I just thought it took the momentum away. Yeah, with yeah. this with this movie, I was totally cool with it because we had so many flashbacks in this film to bring us back up to speed with everyone's backstory, which I, I liked. So yeah, I was cool with it. Okay, and one more complaint. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I still enjoy this movie, oh, yeah. but I thought the chain and tatting. Uh, Tad it, Channing Tatum cameo. It was okay when it first appeared, but then I think they they killed it where they he kept appearing. It. They overplayed it and yeah. it kind of lost its. No, nah, okay. There was like maybe one or two, like one extra scene that he didn't need to be there. Just that one scene. That was it. And then the yeah. the, the, the two other times didn't that would have been it. fine. Didn't yeah. need it. Yeah, my one major dislike actually. <laughs> you're gonna laugh at this one, but it was actually Sandra Bullock. Uh, after seeing her at the end, how much work has she had done? I mean, she's had a lot of work done. Well, she's almost 60. Dude, Brad Pitt looks great. And that guy's got wrinkles. Yeah. Y- you know, what? what is, what is actresses, like, what's their problem? They, they can't have a wrinkle? Like, they, uh, does Hollywood, like, you have a wrinkle, you're out? Like, is that what they're doing here? Because well, she's all puffy and she doesn't look attractive anymore. To me, anyways, well, I've lost my, I've lost my, you know what I mean? Well, she kind of doesn't look like she used to. Like no. She looks pretty altered and then she has all that uh, clown makeup on her. Uh, like, her, her face doesn't move when she talks and no. that it kind of bothers me. You think I'm cool? Just, you want to kiss me? You want to hug Look, I think me. McDonald is more feminine. I'd you rather kiss him. You want to love me. It's really sad, actually, but... You know, they, they do what they got to do to stay in Hollywood, I guess. Well, but, but that's the thing is like these actresses, they they strike it hot early in their career. But as they age, unfortunately, that's that's the the world, right? Women, younger youth and all that they get, yeah. all that's thrown to them. But men kind of later, because if you think about it, a lot of the male actors, you think about, uh, I was just thinking about Conan, for example, Arnold was in his 40s when he broke out. Like he, he was in his late 30s and... 40s when he actually well yeah he had a whole career before movies he he did but my my point is a lot of some of these actors like the male actors actually they don't hit their stride until later in life where a lot of these actresses at a young age because if you look at some of these uh, young actresses out there they're you know like the jennifer lawrence's very young they they're in everything and you know it's just how the world works unfortunately it's not fair but yeah this is how it is yeah anyways yeah, that, that, that's a little side note. But other than that, um, that's all I have to say about Bullet Train. I think they do kind of set up if the movie is successful, um, maybe a sequel. I'll be honest with you, I'd be kind of cool to see uh, a little more happening with the characters, uh, especially the Brad Pitt. I think there's lots that you could do. I think it did okay at the box office so far. Yeah, I just know about the one day that it made. Like I think it made twelve million one day, sixty million this weekend. Okay, cool. That's worldwide, so I think it made thirty million. The movie only cost, I think, seventy, eighty Good. to make, so it wasn't that expensive. So That's on this is their first weekend, <laughs> so maybe the movie could have a little bit of legs, and I, I could see them doing another one. Yep. The critical reception is pretty bad. Like, uh, the the critics were pretty hard uh, on it, but screw the critics. We're cares? the real critics here. Yeah, but I think I think generally, if you you do I mean, like yourself and myself, it's it's a fun, enjoyable movie. It is. You you just have to turn your brain off, and if you like Brad Pitt, uh, we'll see.
it. Yeah, honestly, I haven't seen a, a Brad Pitt film in a very long time, so I was happy to see him in the in the role again, in a role. Yeah, again. And yeah, and he's aging good. Well, that's all I gotta say. Thanks uh, for listening to our bullet train review. Yep. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. You can catch us wherever you get your podcasts, such as Google, Spotify, Podbean, Audible, and Amazon. You can also follow us on Twitter at TurkRaz, as well as YouTube, Odyssey, and Rumble. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell for notification and share our videos and podcasts out there.